welcome to the 26th episode of Film Stop. This is your new host Meghna and today we have a very special guest with us and he is none other than your old host Ooh. Mr. Suraj. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um it's very uh, very nice to be on here as a guest this time. Um I'm really enjoying this um I guess very relaxed space for myself. And I'm enjoying that the responsibility is on you to curate the show. <laughs> it, it's cool. It's nice to be here. <laughs> so today we are back with our reviews on the much raved Indian series The Kota Factory. Uh would you start with a quick synopsis? Yeah, of course. So uh the coda factory is a show that was originally um well it is made by tvf but it was originally for youtube uh the tvf is the viral fever uh they are behind shows like tripling and permanent roommate um and pictures a, a pretty good production house um of course sort of tainted by some controversies and scandals but that's <laughs> off topic back to the synopsis so The Kota Factory is the day-to-day life of Vebhav, a 16-year-old kid and other students and friends of his in Kota, which is a hub for coaching centers where young people go to prepare for various entrance exams. And as Vebhav um navigates his first two years, so do we along with his friends uh and enjoy the ride as he goes along. So would you like to talk about what Kota is? Yeah, sure. So Kota is uh, well, let me take a step back. Before I talk about Kota, I think I want to give a landscape for all of our listeners who may not know uh, Indian education system. Um so in India there's the pillars um for public and for private education, right? So public education is all of your national uh colleges i'm i'm going to specifically talk, talk about colleges and universities so you have national universities and colleges um and then you got private enterprises um and between the two there's a lot of prestigious universities for engineering for medical what have you at a population of 1.2 1.3 billion people there's obviously going to be a lot of competition to get into these prestigious schools whether private or public Uh some of these schools are like IIT, Indian Institute of Technology. So the competitive examination is a is an ordeal in a child's life. Specifically a child who has been either uh wanting to or has been kind of uh pushed into uh following an engineering or a uh medical path. In that Kota fits in as a hub for coaching for students to actually make it into and through these um entrance tests should we call it as the epicenter of the coaching tsunami that has engulfed the se- senior secondary education system in india yeah absolutely I, i mean the the fact is that there are like i said like there's 1.3 billion people and i mean there's hundreds of millions of students every year trying to make it through these examinations at which point there has to be a market for coaching classes at which point this becomes like you said a hub where you know all these coaching classes have kind of built on top of each other and there are some uh top coaching classes in kota where it's it's the dream of these students who are pre- preparing for these examinations to get into so that they can prepare for getting into iits and uh, uh aims um but uh Believe it or not there are it's coaching institutions that will help prepare these students to get into these major coaching coaching institution so it's like you do this and then the next step is that and the next step so is that so coaching class for a coaching class which gets you <laughs> into the fi- like which gets you a chance to take the examination to get into the university that you want to go and then of course you got to spend time in the university i hope we make sense <laughs> <laughs> well none of this makes sense so if we don't then yeah um yeah I mean Kota started as as a hub for delectable kachoris and cotton st- saris and now all we know about everybody who's in Kota ev- everything they talk about is IITs and you know aims and starting from the auto rickshaw wala to the PG auntie 
uh, or whoever. So it's all about education now in Kota. Yeah, and I think the you know the show when it calls itself Kota Factory, it's actually taking itself um, or it's actually portraying itself as a very specific take of this education hub. Right. It's actually talking about how the factory is churning out like a machine churning out students who um, are getting into these colleges. Okay, so um, let's talk about the key aspects that this show has tried to cover and how successful have they been in that process. Yeah, I think the show attempts to take you down the memory lane. Uh, the, The whole been there, done that aspect of the show would you agree with that yeah i mean i I think part of the reason why it's black and white i think is the nostalgia that it probably evokes for the writers and for the director and for the people within it um and and how they're trying to convey it through the the color scheme uh i I think black and white is another reason as well but yeah, I mean, it has the feeling of lived in, right? It feels like putting on an old sweater and, and just feeling relaxed. Um, and, and I think that is owed to the hostel feeling, you know, people who've studied in hostels, especially in India, you know, a place where your friends become your family, your life becomes their life, their problems become your problems, your problems become their problems. And so in that space where all you have is each other, I think that's very nostalgic for me, at least. Um, and so, yeah, I, I agree with you. And I think that they do a really good job at making that that familiarity breathable, like livable. I agree. I think the show is all about giving you a message that make good friends the ones who can help you and who you can (laughs) help in the process of trying to explore your life outside of the comfort of your home and uh, organic friendship right Mm -hmm. so I, i think it's so interesting because most people that you may talk to at least who have gone through the indian education system and have gone outside of their home for the first time, lived in a hostel with friends, you have stories. I mean, most people would have stories from that experience because for the first time, you're outside of the comfort of your home, but also you're for the first time free because most Indian homes are pretty, um, I won't say strict, but they're pretty regimented in certain aspects of life as it pertains to a kid so yeah i i think like the organic friendship that comes out of that is pretty interesting and they they deal with that really well too absolutely and and i think that the show is trying to portray the realistic uh expectation from students uh, a student's life i mean this is not student of the year where you have troubles or girlfriend issues or boyfriend issues it's it's real life problems where this guy Webhav has to decide whether he has to go to uh, Maheshwari classes or to Prodigy classes and real life problems, real life expectations and whatnot. Yeah, it's not posh people problems, right? So I think when you think about student of the year, you have a hero, you have a love triangle, you have really cool locations and uh, cool cars, cool clothes. This is none of that, right? Like, and it, I think that that kind of adds to your point. It adds to the familiarity because mm-hmm. we've all been through some version of this, this like happening to us, right? This reality. Yeah, it does talk about teenage attraction, but in a tense academic hustle <laughs> where it, it talks about the maturity of the characters, which understand that there is other important things in their lives that they use, they have to t- take care of. And which is beautiful in its own ways. Yeah, and, you know, real life teenage love, if I can say so, or quote unquote relationships are messy. And I think they show that really well, especially in the context of these kids who have dedicated two years of their life um, trying to study and crack this entrance test. In that backdrop, if you want to have a relationship, what does that look like? And even then they have like different flavors of that because Uday has his own relationship and he, Vaibhav, has his own relationship with Vartika. But I think that that's, that's I mean, it's commendable that they took that path. I don't think that they ex- they've they explored it as much yet and I hope they do, but mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, and with some spot on dialogues mm-hmm. such as Bacche do saal mein kota se nikal jate hain par kota saalo tak bachcho se nahi nikalta. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's that's just powerful. Well, that that brings up Jeet Dubey, right? I know I know <laughs> we want to talk spoilers too, but I guess um, before we talk characters and spoilers, do we want to kind of close the spoiler-free uh, review? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Well, I, I mean the the question that I would I'll ask you is that on the scale of please do not watch it to eh, you can watch it if you don't have anything else going on to. You know, watch it when you get the time to, um, all the way up to watch it right now. You know, drop what you're doing and watch it right now. Where does this Kota factory lie for you? Well, it depends on who you are. Uh, if you want to rel- relive your college days, you have someone or know someone who has been to Kota, I think you need to watch this. Um, for the rest of the people, I think they can watch whenever they have the time to. What, what do you say? Yeah, I I think that it's actually an interesting take um, on the Indian education system. So if you're even remotely interested uh, in that, regardless of whether you've you're connected to it or not directly indirectly, I think in that sense, if you're interested in in looking at some um, really gritty uh, content about this, it's very entertaining too. Don't get me wrong, but it's it's very documentary style too. So in that sense, it's worth it. It's worth a watch. It's very slice of life. So I would say, you know, in general, if you are looking for your next show, um, watch this. Don't drop mm-hmm. everything to watch it. But like, if Just you're looking for it. your next show, <laughs> yeah, you can watch this. It's it's a, it's a great watch. Yeah, and it's an easy watch. Two seasons. I think six episodes each. They've got more seasons coming, but um, so far it's just two seasons and it's on Netflix. Okay, time for spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. But before we get into the so- spoilers, um, two things. One, guys, if you're on here, you're listening to us, thank you. We really appreciate it. Like, share, subscribe, um, and forward it to anyone you have <laughs> in mind. The second... Uh, We're going to take a quick break before we return for the spoiler-filled discussions. You can stay if you are okay with this, um, because for this particular show, there aren't any major twists that we think will ruin your watch. Mm -hmm. So you can actually stay and listen in, because we're going to dive really deep into um, many things uh, connected to the show. Right after this quick break. We're back again with Kota Factory and let's dive into the spoilers, starting with characters. So let's talk about Vaibhav. Yeah, so so Vaibhav is an interesting character, right? He's essentially the protagonist of this, this story. We're following him, but he's also not your quintessential lead or hero, right? Because he has... Um, a very seemingly ordinary life, just like his friends, just like everyone. And that's, I think, one of the points that the show is making, that none of them are really different from each other in the sense that they all are going through this very plateaued period in their life where the only thing that they have in life, day in and out, is their education. Um, in, that, in that sense, I think Mayur, uh, who has played that character, is really strong as how he has done it. Yeah, he has done a brilliant job at just being himself. And he is a character who is one amongst us, and maybe us. And he has done a great job at playing that character. Yeah, and having said that, though, I do think that there is interest... Like, the first season deals with his um, character arc better than the second season. I I, I think that they were concentrating on some other characters as we'll dive into those. But um, the first season, you know, he had this journey that he was going to make. Like, he was in his his prodigy classes, not as good as Maheshwari, and he is trying to navigate where he should be and he starts from this like, oh, I need to be at Maheshwari and then at the end when he gets to Maheshwari he realizes that other things are, are important too. But the second, it kind of feels like a filler for his character um, in some ways. But Yeah, it shows his struggle of um, a student who has come to a new city and he is trying to find his way through it and then there is this teacher that is Jitu Bhaiya who is there to guide him. And uh, yeah, let's talk about Jitu Bhaiya for that matter. How can we get through this podcast without talking about <laughs> Jitu Bhaiya, right? So, um, well, what, what's your take? You start off. I think we all have that one teacher in our lives who has just charmed us. And we are very much influenced by their personality, maybe their teaching techniques. 
and have immense respect for them. I think Jitu Bhaiya is that teacher in the story. Yeah, I you know there are certain teachers or professors who become mentors for you, especially at impressionable ages. And I, I mean, I hope most people have that experience. Like for me too, there was a Jitu Bhaiya in my life, um, a Sandeep uncle, um, oh, yes. who who actually. <laughs> Uh, came into my life when I was in my 10th grade, 9th grade, 10th grade. Um, he was actually a music director for my father. Some people who are listening and know that my, my father is in the Indian film industry. Um, so he's, he came in as a music director in my father's life and then found out that he actually coaches students. And at the time, I was an aspirant too, trying to get into engineering schools, um, which I did, by the way, but <laughs> not in IIT. Um, but he coached me through not just the education, but coached me through my life in a sense that he gave me this direction, this way of sculpting the vision for who I want to become as a person, not just what I want to study or do in my career. Um, in that sense, Jitu Bhaiya evoked all those feelings for me. I think talking about character arcs, they gave Jitu Bhaiya more of a character arc in the second season than they did for Vebhav. And I liked that they went into a different direction with Jitu Bhaiya. It was a different, um, let's say, conflict that he was trying to resolve. And at the greater heart of that story, the second season is this question, right? Like, you know, what about people like him who need to start or want to start classes to compete with the giants and the behemoths? Um, and how do they get through that? Absolutely. I think the character is doing a good job at breaking the stereotype of how a teacher should be because... Uh, because the expectation that the society has from a teacher is that they have to be perfect. But this character is not. But yes, he is in, a, in his own ways a beautifully laid out character, which I, I am really impressed with. Most, most well-written characters are flawed, right? I mean, that's the beauty of him. And, and Jitu Bhaiya in the first season was seemingly so perfect um that you kind of you obviously really like the character for who he is in the story and in Vebhav's life but I think the second season does a good job at kind of giving him more dimensions too yeah I I remember this one scene where he is trying to tell his students to do a certain thing he's trying to tell his students that one should not smoke and then there is a cut to him going and getting some a cigarette from the tailor which which kind of tells that yeah you you do not have to be perfect and uh, yeah 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 the biggest takeaway from his character is ask for help if you are stuck right would you it, agree yeah i also think that you know another takeaway for me is that a, a teacher does not have to be just someone who is educating you on concepts that they're supposed to be teaching you right like a teacher has to be a true teacher has to be educational in, in every sense of that word. Yeah, um, he should be an agent of change or a leader who can inspire and who can help his or her students in different ways. And he does a good job. For some of you listening and you don't know, but Meghna was actually a professor in India. <laughs> so <laughs> she knows a thing or deal about what she's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we've discussed and decided not to dive deep into it because... I don't think 30 minutes is going to be enough for that. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, at the same time, like, it's interesting, right? Because I want to, I, I, I do want to ask you what your perspective on Jitu Bhaiya and um, his educational style was coming. I mean, you're a teacher. What's your take on it? On, I guess, all of Kota Factory. What stands out to me in this series is that it tries to highlight the problems of these private institutions which are run by people who have no idea what education is all about and the struggle of this teacher who really wants to make a difference in their students' lives. Yeah, and... His students' lives. And so would would you say that that piece that, that ir like, does it irk you? Like, when you say it stands out to you, does it irk you <laughs> that there are these people who are running coaching classes who have no sense or no idea of what education truly is besides just making the, the rupees yeah i i would say yes but there is a stark difference between how prodigy classes run and how maheshwari classes runs true true i think in some sense maheshwari has 
uh, it seems like a little bit more of a leaning towards actually providing educational value to the students. Yeah, absolutely. You cannot deny the business mindedness of it, but I don't quite mind that. The, the fact that they let Webhav go to another coaching class for physics uh, because he clarified that his professor at Maheshwari classes is not good enough, um, to me was actually that point illuminated. Absolutely, Suraj. Well, talk about, let's talk about Maheshwari, sir. Yeah, I think Maheshwari, sir, grabs our attention in the limited scenes that he is in with his cliche dialogues. And uh, I mean, you can instantly start to hate the character and in a good way, yeah. <laughs> if that's even a thing. He is. I, I, he had that speech at the beginning of season two, which is pretty good. Like, it's a really good monologue, like a juicy monologue for that actor. But Unrewarded um, geniuses are not geniuses, but cliches. Yes. <laughs> and I love that, you know, statement where he says, you know, this is the moment. These This next year is going to decide if you're going to be a guy who drives a sedan, SUV, or takes an auto. Um, and like the the point that he is trying to draw is that in a world like the Indian education industry, you have to push at the right time and make sure that you're focusing on the right things um, to get that end goal, to, to be ahead in life in that rat race. Yeah, Maheshwari sir is not sugarcoating the reality at all for his students. Look, I'm not saying that India should not or Indian students should not aspire to do anything outside of engineering or whatever because, you know, they will not get, um, they may not have a sedan, like an expensive car or an expensive apartment, you know, five years later. What I'm trying to say is that in a place like India where there's intense competition, if you choose to go down the route of engineering or medical or law like you did, Migna, um, I think there's a sense of focus that you do need and to, to succeed. In some ways, I think the show, as much as it kind of paints the education system into a corner, in some ways, I think the show also applauds this this idea of a student who is 15 years old but is so hyper focused on an ambitious reality of his own or ambitious future of his own i think that's commendable like and the show also commends i mean of course there are negatives to it there's like this the 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 students taking too much stress at that age and how that percolates into a different reality blah 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 failure and how that affects them all of those are are things but i think that there's something to be said about the positive of it all I agree. Uh, I think the the bright side is that you get to uh, experience being a part of the most coveted institutions in India, which for a fact is eight times harder to crack as compared to Harvard. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that. <laughs> which is interesting, right? Because, I mean, Harvard opens up doors at different levels. I wouldn't say levels, but at Harvard... You know, it gives you a different exposure. IIT gives you a different exposure. And, you know, yeah, those are to be discussed in a different podcast. Yeah, speaking of, uh, you have been part of uh, one of the most premier institutions, both in India and in US. So how would you compare your experience in both the countries? Mm. Um. It's interesting. So in India, for those who don't know, in India, I was at uh, Manipal Institute of Technology, short form MIT. Yes, I'm from MIT, but the (laughs) Indian version. Um, I did my first two years of mechanical engineering in India, and then I transferred to U of I at Urbana-Champaign for the next two. Um, And then I also did my um, grad school here at Northwestern University. So In some ways, yes, I've been part, I've been fortunate enough to be a part of, you know, some good schools. I think that, you know, there's pros and cons to both. I think that India, when I was doing engineering in India, the the good was kind of what the show shows, which is I built lifelong relationships. I got a sense for how... I can find my own being outside of the comfort of home. So it really exposed me to a world outside of, um, you know, home and family. 
on the downside, the education system specifically, I think, you know, demanded that the student to, to be able to succeed really kinds of kind of, you know, mugs up <laughs> um, a bunch of these concepts, theories. And at that point, it was more transactional than really learning something. In America, um, by contrast, I was given a lot of opportunity to, to learn applied versions of concepts that we were being taught in class. So I really like that. Having said that, had I not done schooling in India, uh, my you know primary, secondary education in India, I don't think I would have had as strong of a foundation to tackle some of the things in the, the way that I tackled when I came to America. And I think I think a lot of Indians who do have done the same thing as I have or you know similar path would kind of echo that to some extent. Thank you for sharing your journey. Um, <laughs> let us also talk about one of the other interesting character in, in the series that is Mina. <laughs> back to characters, yes. <laughs> yeah, back to characters. <laughs> yeah, uh, what, what, what do you think about Mina? Um, to me, in, in one word, I would say, uh, in one sentence, I would say that Mina is is absolutely a pure being, a great friend, and he is not your average first bencher because he has issues, he has his love interest, he gets infatuated and he deals with his problems and he talks about it to his teacher and whatnot. I mean, it, he's a good character indeed and I am a big, big fan of Meena who also happens to be an ex-IITian. Yeah, yeah. Actually, there's Jitu Bhaiya is also, Jitendra Kumar, he's also an ex-IIT. And there's a couple of people who've written the story. Um, they are ex-IIT. And so I think it shows and it bleeds through that, you know, these people have, or know what they're talking about. But going back to Mina, for me, a very singular scene defined him <laughs> early on in the first step, first season where Vi- Vebhav brings cake for them to eat and and <laughs> and Mina goes tum amir log kabhi bhi cake kha lete ho <laughs> before that he asks kiska birthday <laughs> so it just it's a very pavan character and i i mean i was fortunate enough to have a very similar friend in in manipal this guy will know who i'm talking about but he you know friends like these are gems right you um you have valuables that you collect in your life as you go through life and different phases of life. And then you have invaluables such as these friends and these moments. And I think that's one of the beauties that comes out through Mina in the show. Yeah, you may or may not be in touch with them, but they will live through the stories that you will have to share with your friends wherever you're in your life. And yeah. Your friends, your family, your Whatever. kids, your grandkids, because yeah. <laughs> it, it goes on, right? Yeah. So we are close to 30 minutes. Um, we, we would like to sum up and uh, yeah, I want to talk to you about the introduction of Rosesh. Yes, as Gagan said. Oh my God. Oh my God, he's great. He's just, he's such a good actor. He's absolutely to, versatile. To take what he used to do with Sarabhai versus Sarabhai, like mama and all of that stuff. And then get to this point where he's playing such an interesting character because, you know, he has this very strong sense of i mean uh, practicality. practicality yes to his to his approach and i i mean i i really enjoyed the little bit that he is and i hope that he's a lot stronger in the the next season as a character contract karna tha sir <laughs> contract karna tha sir yes so final thoughts right i um i want to ask you what 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 are your final thoughts of the show the show is beautifully filmed i mean uh, the drone shots of the city and, and how the camera is following cars that go into different directions. Um, the chimney shots, I mean, that has a lot to say, at least to me. Yeah, I think we've spoken a lot about the writing, a lot about the acting, um, a lot about, you know, how it's affected us and I think will affect a ton of other people. But I think we need to talk a little bit about the direction, right? So you brought up a couple of things in your last thoughts. And I think Raghav Subhu, or Subhu is a director to watch out for because more than anything else, I think he has something to say. And 
most great directors or you know auteurs start off with having something to say and um i'm very excited all all your the open years <laughs> um waiting to listen to what he has to 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 say to us i loved that he went with the choice for black and white um not many people know but the show was originally going to be color and um he had this nagging thought that he wants to go black and white because these kids are living a binary life when they're there it's you know win or loss black or white and um when he tried to switch it to black and white he had to do some convincing especially with the sponsors of the show and blah 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 but mm. the fact that he got through he persevered i think is great because there is a huge payoff with that with that choice and instrument of of um i guess filmmaking that he is he yeah used. it absolutely worked out well and and the moments where it switches from color to monochrome has its own deeper meaning yeah and tvf needs to be given a shout out here because they keep doing this again and again and they do it so well taking slice of life stories and making them about us our um our individual struggles and resistances and and hurdles that we all need to come up uh, come over so I, i you know uh, yeah and it tells a lot about the changing appetite of the audience as well so yeah it's been going great and i'm excited for season 3 yeah we are all so with that guys uh we want to really truly thank you for being here before we leave we want you to like share and subscribe <laughs> to our podcast guys and if you guys have any comments any uh issues please take them up take them up with Megna from now on <laughs> i'm kidding you can still reach us at filmstop.podcast@gmail.com until next time guys have a great one bye bye